Hey there, Wire Wizard. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the stats panel in Resolume Wire. This panel was introduced in Resolume 7.20 and is used to measure the performance of your patch. The stats panel should be visible in the default layout. But if your layout does not have the panel, you will need to navigate to the View menu over here and activate the stats panel. The stats panel shows you all the nodes in your patch. You can use the panel to quickly navigate to nodes by clicking on a name. Alternatively, you can use the search bar to narrow down the selection of the nodes shown. Fun fact about the search bar, you can use it any place, anywhere, anytime by using the shortcut Command F on Mac or Control F on Windows. This will work even if the stats panel is closed. The panel is composed out of four columns. Name, Category, Load and Version. You can click on these columns to sort them. Alphabetically for name and category, numerically for load and version. The names shown are the actual names of the nodes. So if you have renamed some nodes, the panel will use these names. In case of renaming, the original name will be behind the name in brackets. If the node is instantiated, the panel will also show you the number of instances of that node. The category column lets you sort nodes by category. This can be useful if you want all the video effects shown next to each other in order to inspect their respective loads. Talking about loads, let's talk about the load column. The load of a node tells you how the stress on your machine is distributed among your nodes. The load is relative and does not say anything about the performance cost of a given node, unless you're losing frames, which we'll get back to in a bit. Time for a little demonstration. This is best shown when starting with a clean canvas. I'll create a single texture in node and now inspect the stats panel. Oh no, panic, call the performance police. The texture in node is hitting a near 100% of the load. No worries here, it is this high because it's the only node in the patch. As mentioned before, the load of a node is relative to the patch. Now let's add a really intensive effect to our chain. For this I'll use the bloom effect, cranked all the way up. As you can see the distribution of the load is now quite different as the bloom requires much more computing power than the texture in. When we look at a complete patch, like the neon circuit example here, we can see that the load is often nicely distributed among all nodes. Nodes that are in attribute flow, like this linear node, do not contribute to the load as they are computed only once. So where does this leave us? How can we use the load to debug and optimize our patch? I'm glad you asked. Because the load is relative, we can look at the stats panel and see how much each node contributes to the load. We might see that a given node is producing 75% of the load. This might be an indication that we're doing something wrong here. Maybe we are instantiating a bunch of textures here that we shouldn't be instantiating. So we can have a look. But keep in mind that a high number is not necessarily bad. Maybe you have a highly optimized patch. Everything is running as efficiently as possible. In that case, it would make sense that your render nodes, for example, contribute to the most of the load, as the rest of the patch is already optimized. So how about the frame dropping I mentioned before? Let's check that out. Let's go murder a laptop. In this patch, I have enabled the FPS and stats bar. You can do this too by navigating to the view menu and selecting show FPS and stats. We can see that we are losing frames when looking at the FPS counter. I should be hitting 60, but I'm only doing 30 instead. Why is that? When looking at the stats panel, we can see that the transform node is doing almost all the load. That is weird, we're just pushing some shapes around. Or are we? Time for a closer inspection. Hovering over the transform, we can see that it outputs shapes. No, textures. 
we're not pushing 400 shapes around, but 400 full HD 920 by 1080 textures. Rookie mistake. Let's switch the shape render and the transform around. And I'll also update the sine oscillator values to match this. And we're back in action. 80 to 90 happy frames per second and a load that is distributed nicely among the nodes. Before I end this video, I want to have a short chat about performance, hardware stats and optimization. It is very easy to get carried away with shaving up a couple of percentages. But you should not let optimization limit your creativity. Your computer is made to do an absolute ton of calculations and is happy to do so. So use it. Performance is not really an issue until it becomes an issue. And when it becomes an issue, that is the moment you can start looking at optimization and fixing performance. Nothing is quite a creativity killer like looking at GPU percentages and load distributions. Not to mention that the accuracy of hardware performance monitoring can greatly differ between operating systems, brands and configurations. This is also why Wire has this relative load system instead of a bunch of magical sounding hardware stats. As in the end, it is simply a more practical approach to monitoring your patch. And that was it for this tutorial. I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time.